So we have the Mugen Civic back on the lift, back in the shop. George is doing the next step in the series of his build. Got some more things going on with it. I'll let him talk to you about it here in a second and describe what it is we're doing. So this is what it looks like. You remember some of the past episodes. It's been a while, so we're trying to do a catch up. And let me tell you why it's been a while. We have been busy. This isn't how we make our money. YouTube is not our business. You would be absolutely outstanding if you saw how much our movies make. This looks fantastic under here. It still needs a little bit of cleaning. It does have plans for this. That's why there's nothing going on with that. I think the last video we did was the engine mounts. So we're taking today to work on George's car. Um, we actually finished up a job early, so I, he is doing the next setup, which is what, George? Tell us what we're doing. The whole brake package we do on everything else. This is the LHT recommended brake package. So this is stuff you've had already kind of collecting dust. Yeah, it's just been sitting there. So there is a few options for this. Of course, there is a big brake setup. He is just doing the replacement parts. Uh, StopTech rotors are our favorite rotors for many reasons. We'll show you those in a minute when we open it. Goodridge lines, same again, many line options. These are our favorite. For an 06 to 11 SI. That's it. And they're our favorite based on installing them and comparing them to others. Uh, people often ask, why do you like this over that? Well, when you install 10 different things, you start to build up your own opinion of what fits, what looks, what works the nicest, which is how we've come up with our assumption with what we are doing. So front and back pads, uh, this is the new master cylinder. It's a Nissan. I think your master cylinder, didn't you say your master cylinder was getting it's, kind of squishy or is it just yeah, leaking? It's, it's kind of weird, it's, I don't know if it's leaking or what, but it just loses a little pressure to a light. It might just need to be bled, it might be fine. But yeah, it might have air in the system. But uh, you do, why, a uh, do it and not get the part just in case. Yeah, if you're going to do a full brake system, when it's your own stuff, I mean, I try and do this with customers' cars. I don't like to upsell people on things. Uh, you've, you've seen our videos enough by now. You know I'm not gonna try and sell you this bit if you don't need it and you wanna need this. We don't need the extra work. We don't try and upsell you. We're not trying to book in extra work to make extra money. I found if you treat people right, send them away with money in their pocket and give them good advice, they'll come back with twice as much of it and want to spend it with you because you didn't take it off them in the first place. So now the wheels are off, just to give you an idea. This is what it looks like under here. These are obviously the Mugen struts. It's more than just badging on this car. It has a lot of extra things on here. So once you get the wheels off, the next thing you're gonna have to do is remove these two Phillips screws here. These can be a little bit of a pain to get off. Uh, I've seen a lot of people talk about these and not wanting to put them back on and they say, well, the wheel holds on the rotor. Well, there's a reason why they put those on is so that the rotor is fully seated before you put the wheel on so you've got less chance of anything having like debris under there or anything having a slight warp issue. Well, the calipers look like they're in pretty good shape. Also, the lines, the lines look to be really good too. Uh, one of the reasons you change to braided lines is there is a little bit of flex in the rubber lines, not as much as people think, but everything adds up by changing those to the braided stainless lines. It gives it a little bit more positive pedal feel. Think of pressing the master cylinder and all four lines flexing just a little bit. Well, it all adds up to a slight squishy pedal before you start feeling positive braking pressure. So changing those to the Goodridge lines we use Goodridge, one, because they're DOT approved, which means they are gonna fit and perform right. They have been tested. But the biggest thing we've found is they fit perfect. Not only is the angle on the end of the banjo bolt here perfect, it doesn't run into anything. The retaining piece here, it's in the right spot. They often slide, but it is the right size. It does fit perfect. And the flare, is perfect here. We've seen some aftermarket brake lines have a slightly different degree of flare and when you put this together we've seen them leak and you have to really really crank on those and over torque them to stop them leaking which isn't the right thing to do. So the Goodridge we found to be the best ones out of the group. And once you've got the rotor screws out I always do that first because you can put something in here to kind of lock the rotor into place to take the screw out you know because this <clears throat> will spin obviously 
and when you're trying to take that screw out while it's spinning it doesn't work very well and there's veins in the rotor of course you know there's veins in the rotor and there's a hole in the caliper so if you put something in there it'll lock it in place you can take the screw out so next thing there's some bolts here on the back of the caliper so you take the top one and the bottom one out and that'll help pull your caliper out and also release your brake line from here it has got the one little mount there and that'll give you some room on the brake line so you can tie the caliper up out of the way I won't tie the caliper up out of the way because I'm not using the line, so I'm not really all that concerned. But if you are reusing your lines, take your caliper by the hole in here and maybe tie it up to the strut or the knuckle or the control arm. Just get it up out of the way and don't put tension on the line. So this is the caliper bracket. This is what you're going to take off if you're doing the rotors as well. This is what the brake pad itself rides in. It has slots that keep everything in place. And that's how it looks when it's in the car. Everything rides in its own little area. The hardware here keeps pressure on it. And when you take the caliper off, this will just pop out of here. And then the two 17s on the back of this pull it off so that you can remove the rotor. Now when you've got the rotor here by itself, the rotor will often be somewhat stuck on. And don't just come in and hit it with a hammer, even though you're not going to reuse it. Just like the holes here for the screws to hold it on, there's two holes here. And you can take an eight millimeter bolt and they thread into there. And then another one over here. And when you tighten those up, it pops the rotor off. Now when you pull that off, you're gonna take a wire brush to this area and make sure there's no debris, no rust nothing loose underneath that rotor hat. You want the new rotor to sit on there perfectly flush. After you've got this flange all cleaned up and got all the debris off of it, there was a little bit of stuff in here, it wasn't too bad, but you get that all cleaned up, now it's time for the new rotor. And I'm going with the StopTech rotors. These are the ones we use on everything, the S2000 kits we do. You know, anything that we do brakes on, we go with this rotor. And when you put the rotor on, even though it comes in this bag and it doesn't have any oil or any visible oil on it, some rotors do. You want to take it and wipe it down with brake cleaner. You don't want any oils on there and wash your hands as well. I mean, you should be washing your hands now anyways. But wash your hands and then use a nice brake cleaner to get every, all the grease off this. You don't want to leave any grease on there. And the screws for the rotors, when you put them in, Take some of the Space Grease Permatex Anti-Seize and not only the threads, but put it on the cone as well. Because that cone can also get stuck in there when you're trying to take it apart. So it'd be two things working against you. So a little anti on the cone and a little anti on the threads. And once you've got your rotor on and tight, if there are any stickers on the rotor, this one says remove before installation, but I always do it afterwards just because I know that I've been there, I've tightened everything up, one last check, and I'll wipe that off with a little more brake cleaner. But there's the rotor tightened on. Next step, if you're painting them, be to paint. If not, the caliper bracket. So just like we stress on all cars, look at the color of the brake fluid that came out of it. It's probably darker than the oil that came out of it. This I actually call we talked about this before and again I don't want to stress I don't want well I do want to stress this this causes problems not only causes your master cylinder to leak and blow out it will damage the calipers you got to think this guy here is basically a giant syringe so obviously a syringe has a piston in here and it's not rubber but it's a type of rubber let's just let's just call it rubber for right now you're pressing on this and it is pushing a piston in here to supply pressure out of these right here well when the fluid is all gunky and gritty and it has moisture in it who knows what it actually damages that piston in there 
and as this presses down here, rather than having as much pressure on this, the fluid tends to bypass the piston, tends to leak internally. You ever sit on a, you ever get in a car where you press the brake down and you press the brake like this, and if you keep steady pressure, it kind of does one of these numbers and goes down, usually bypassing the piston in there. What normally is for me, I'm sitting in traffic and I'm just sitting there like this and then the car just starts to roll and I'm like, oh. Yep, pump it a couple of times. <laughs> usually telltale sign that this is leaking it could also be contamination from the fluid but that causes damage if your system is in good shape go ahead and flush it you see how gunky and dark that is i think i've filmed this a thousand times if you watch our videos i think i've drummed this into you by now but this wants to be clean in here this is the brake this is the clutch on this car I don't think this has been done, but it'll probably be addressed at another time. But part of doing the brake lines, you're gonna you're gonna drain your fluid. You may as well flush it with the the fresh fluid and do it all at one go. So this is the old master cylinder that came out of it. One thing you just noticed is the ports on here are absolutely huge. These are usually like a, a 10 millimeter nut that that brake line goes into, and these were 12. The thread size is much bigger and the size is supposed to be the same so three quarter this is the one that came off the car so this is the new one and this is the size of the ports this is a normal size like an s2000 size well we figured as soon as he has this he already bought it we can't return it i'm going to pull it apart and see if we can use the guts out of this one and put it in the other one uh is the piston still in there yeah another bit of one anyways yeah I can't say I've done this. No, yeah, me neither. Maybe put air pressure on this line. Just burp a little bit of air in it and see if it'll force that out. Do it. Might need a little bit more PSI than that. Yeah. Put on the air and just give it a burp burp. See if it'll come out. Blowing into here too, though. Yeah, it could that's be. Comes in. That's feed in it. Yeah, that I don't think it doesn't look like it comes in until back here. There's a little tiny hole in there. Can you stick a piece of wire down there with a make a hook? See if there's anything to get a hold of. Yeah, that's what I was trying with that little green one. Maybe this will allow access. You can take that down there. Maybe there is access to that piston that you can push behind it. Yeah, if anything, we can block all the holes and hit it with air. Yeah. If not, make a really expensive flute. Or a cheap flute. I don't know how much flutes cost. Yeah, it might be cheap. Yeah, it might be. The last flute I bought was never, so I don't know how much they cost. Right, try and hit that with air. I got my hand over the end. Hmm. I feel a spring in it. Yeah. Does that thing look like you got any closer? Nope. It looks like it's got a spring behind it or something. So instead of watching paint dry while you're, pa you're painting your calipers, you want to take all these pins that you remove from the brackets, take the boots off, and give them a good wipe down. And if there's any kind of rust or really hard stuck on debris, you can kind of take a wire brush to it or polish it. You want to get all these nice and clean so that you can re-grease. Because you want these to slide nice and free on a car with sliding pin single piston calipers. A lot of the performance of the caliper relies on this sliding. Because if this doesn't slide, then you're only using one side of the piston, one brake pad, and it never really works that well. And also, while cleaning the pins, 
all your brake hardware. If your brakes did not come with new hardware, take your old hardware and wear a brush it. I've already done that to these. They're a little discolored, but they're smooth and free of defects. No major particles or anything left on them. You want to make sure they're all clean. I've already done all mine. So time to grease these pins and start installing the caliper brackets. So now that you've put your caliper bracket on it in reverse order of removal, just put the two bolts back in the back of that. Put the brake pads in, of course the hardware that I told you to sand, and then the brake pad. And the pad that has the little tab on it that squeaks on the rotor, that one always goes to the inside. I don't think I've ever done one where it goes anywhere else. So always put that to the inside pad. There'll only be two with that thing on them. And after this, we can bolt the caliper back on. Like we've shown you before, the rear pads install. It isn't difficult by any means, but you have to pay attention. This little bump here on the pad will line up in the X on the back of the, on the piston. When you look at the piston, there'll be an X, basically here to here. And it helps you to wind in the piston, you know, for resetting the caliper. And I believe it has something to do with the e-brake stopping on here. Well, if you don't line that up, then your brake pads will wear at an uneven angle, like in the back of this car. I don't know if you can really tell there, but that inside pad has worn at an angle. So make sure you pay attention to that little bump on the pad. And the Goodridge kit comes with everything brand new, new bolts, washers, clips to hold the lines on, it comes with some extra brackets if necessary and lines that are labeled. They f always fit nice, the brackets always are right. That's why we prefer Goodridge brake lines. When putting stainless steel brake lines on, I like to leave the factory line on and I clamp it. I don't really worry about how I clamp it because I'm gonna throw it in the garbage when I'm done. I leave it connected to the car, but install the stainless line all the way on its bracket and then when you're ready to put it on you crack that put it right back under it and you lose it the smallest amount of brake fluid possible make the least amount of mess and the last thing you'll do is hook the stainless braided line to the factory hard line and the bracket in this kit here is for the rear brake lines because the factory brake line the bracket is part of the brake line so you'll need to replace that entire piece with the piece in the kit all right, so at least the new reservoir looks good. Looks pretty in there. Nice new fluid. It was like chocolate, which is something we've become used to. But it was so much better. Look at that. Nice new brakes. Now, of course, you got to do a brake-in procedure. Kind of like a clutch. You don't want to do any hard stops, any overheating. You don't want to glaze the pads. So as much stop and go without putting heat in the pads is usually one of our best calls for action here but that was good I should really stand out behind those wheels yeah that was real good that color combination works doesn't it yeah. very cool you can definitely see the caliper now all right time to see if it works right yeah, see, the work. see if the works see if the engine still starts too Sounds like you might be needing a battery. Can you leave the door open? I'd look at the date on the battery. You might want to consider a battery before it leaves you stranded. I think your last battery was like 11 years old, wasn't it? Like that, yeah. You're not really known for buying new batteries. No. <laughs> I don't have to. No, let the next guy buy one. Buy a car with a new battery, save the money. <laughs> Even if you spend an extra grand on a car, it saves that battery. Exactly. Batteries suck. You don't spend 120 bucks on a battery anymore. Let's get a good look at it outside in the daylight. Yeah, it definitely looks better. Definitely cool. All right, so after watching this video, you should know how to do that. It was pretty straightforward. Let's a quick look at the other side. There is more stuff coming for this car, by the way. It's been a long, uh, drawn-out series, I know that, but we have been busy. And like we say, customers' cars always come first. 